Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with an awesome new unboxing video on my latest acquisition, a new custom knife from knife maker Andre Thorburn. Andre Thorburn, I don't think I've ever had a video on him as of yet because it has been a long time in the making. I want to go ahead and thank my good friend Tyler. He goes by Tavarish Works here on YouTube and on Instagram. He has a great knife related channel and has some amazing videos where he talks very often about Andre's work and basically considers Andre Thorburn to be the end all be all of custom knife makers and I understand it. I had not really experienced many Thorburn knives until I went to Blade Show 2018. Blade Show 2018 was a very, very excellent experience for me where I got to meet a lot of makers, including Andre Thorburn, including Jason Guthrie, and I had a, including Bill Koenig, and I had an absolutely spectacular time. Not only did I make connections with people, I also was able to procure materials and discover more about these things. So I wanted to tell the story of this knife before I open the package. I am making this video a feature length video so we are going to get into all the details with no time cap. Before I get into all that I wanted to talk about these knives. These are some of the most recent knives that I've acquired and it shows the progression of my collection leading up to this knife and I think that they're relevant stories. At Blade Show 2018, I was able to meet Jason Guthrie. If you guys recall, I used to have a scout. This is a Jason Guthrie scout, a three and a half inch, beautifully done Warncliffe knife. I used to have a copper shred carbon fiber scout with the material much like you see on the Arius right here. If you guys will remember, that knife was truly awesome. I loved it so much that I put in another order with him for a full dress build. I knew that he wanted to work with carbo quartz, and so at Blade Show, I was able to hand him the carbo quartz for him to take back to South Africa. At that point, we discussed that I also wanted to get the Damacore steel on there. Damacore had just been introduced at Blade Show 2018, and it's a very exciting new product with a very interesting nitrogen based steel at the core and the Damasteel the Dama steel patterns as the cladding. And so, when I secured this knife, it was an absolute dream to actually get this. Go back and watch my unboxing video on this knife. Absolutely an amazing piece. And it made me fall in love with the Damacore steel. You guys will also remember these two recent acquisitions, the Gareth Bull Grail Wari, where I had this combination of Mokume with some of the carbon plate bronze dust carbon fiber makes an absolutely beautiful pairing. I love the Mokume, the bronze on bronze look that was achieved here with the bronze liners and the liner lock configuration. I absolutely love this for an everyday carry option. It's fancy, but it's very easy to carry and it looks amazing. Also recently I picked up this knife. This is the Jonas Iglesias Volt. You guys can see the video I have on this one. This one full dress with a full Mokume show scale and an XHP core San Mai steel. Again, I'm getting into this very sort of high-end material sort of builds on my custom knives now because I'm exploring these things. I'm really enjoying it. I love the material science that goes into these things. The three different metals that compose Mokume of nickel, silver, copper, and bronze. And then you have the multiple layers of different steels in a Sanmai blade or in a Damacore blade. And certainly you guys know that I'm a big fan of these copper or bronze infused carbon fibers. Since I had a very good experience with the Arius, I definitely wanted to get back in touch with my friend Ryan over at Composite Craft for another project and he absolutely delivered. So while I was at Blade Show, I discovered all of these materials. I was able to meet Andre Thorburn at his table. He had 40 knives with him. He had an incredible array of knives and I was able to sample his knives from top to bottom and get a very good sense of the sizes, the shapes, and the actions and everything. What I can tell you is that it was consistently incredible. Andre is known for his action and his fit and finish. As his uh, motto says right here, First impressions count, it's the last impression that lasts. And so he takes it very seriously, the impression that his knives will leave on you. So I've talked about the lead up and the materials and the progression of my uh, 
collection. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you the birth certificate on this guy just to get you excited. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen pictures of the knife, but I'm building this up here. Congratulations on your Andre Thorbird knife. We've picked up an L36M with a Damacor blade steel with gold leaf carbon fiber that's shred with a bolster and backspacer of Chad Nichols Zerkume. So very exciting right here. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up because it's been five and a half minutes and I haven't even shown you the knife. I appreciate you watching all the way through. And here it is. An absolutely breathtaking opening and first impression. The first impression matters, but the last impression, it's the last impression that lasts. So first impressions, amazing. I was able to meet Andre Thorburn at the show, as I've mentioned. When I met him and I saw his knives and the way that he puts his knives together, I knew I needed one from him. And I knew that he was a master at high-end materials. And so obviously the Frunky came out. And so I went over to the Chad Nichols table. Chad Nichols produces Damascus and Timascus and Moku, uh, really he calls it Mokutai and he produces Mokume. Oh, i just show you that blade right there. I just busted that one out on you. Okay, so uh, I picked that, I went over to his table and I picked out the most beautiful piece of his newest material called Zerkume. This is copper, bronze, and zirconium mixed in there rather than nickel silver of traditional Mokume. This is the carbon fiber from my good friend Ryan at Composite Craft that I had previously mentioned, and the Damacor blade. So you have a quick overview there. What I wanna do is get into the details of this and talk about every single piece and give you some really high resolution and nice video of it. But before we go too much further, this is still a Dr. Frunky video, we are going to get some vital signs on the L36M. The L36M is one of many knives in the Andre Thorburn lineup. To be perfectly honest, I am not well acquainted enough to be able to tell you one from the other, honestly. They kind of go from an L15 or something like that to an L50 something, and each one is kind of a little bit bigger and a little bit different. Some of them have some regular blade shape, some are Warncliffe. Uh, you'll just have to study that for yourselves. I can't educate you completely on that because I don't know it completely. What I did find, though, was that the L36M was the perfect size for me. This has about a 3.75 or 3.8 inch blade. I'm going to call it 3.75 inch blade. Back to the pivot area, you're looking at about 4.3. Overall length, you're looking at about 8.7 inches. So it's a full size knife and it fit very nicely in my hand and I knew on holding it that I wanted to pick it up. Now, I'm gonna blow your minds again right now with my size comparison because I also recently just got some incredible new scales from my good friend over at in Russia, Aramis Akhmadov, who provided me with these scales made of carbon plate, wild dust carbon fiber. This has bronze, two types of bronze and copper in the carbon fiber, but what I wanted to show you really was the size comparison between the Thorburn and a Paramilitary 2 and a Para 3. So you can see it's significantly bigger than the Para 3 is right there. I'm gonna go ahead and bring out another couple of these knives that were here earlier. I think a good size comparison might be the Koenig Arius. You can see that the Thorburn is still a bit bigger than the Koenig is right there. Uh, I'm gonna bring out the Koenig's baby brother, the Mini Goblin, just to show you how tiny the Mini Goblin is. Here's another common size reference right here that I just happen to have on my table, a ZT0562. So this is a very traditional, uh, a very popular folding uh, flipper right here. And so I think you guys will get a good sense of the size of this thing. A little bit bigger than a 562, sort of the EDC plus category right there. Uh, the handle is beautifully contoured. And the thickness here at the widest point on the carbon fiber is coming in at 0.59 inches. And the blade stock here on the Damacore is 167 thousandths. So really, really nice dimensions for a full-size premium carry knife. Uh, with the additions that I've added, the Zerkume is a bit of a heavy material. Typically, he uses G10 and carbon fiber and titanium and sometimes zirconium. This one is coming in at 6.1 ounces. 
uh, and it feels it feels lighter than that, but it just feels very premium. So let's go ahead and break this knife down anatomically, what we've all been waiting for, looking at the details on this spectacular piece. So I'm gonna wipe this down. The Mokume as it stands right now is a fingerprint magnet, uh, and I wanna just make this very clean for the video. Let us take a look at this absolutely crazy Damacore blade steel. Damacore is an interesting material to me because it is a scientifically very different type of steel. If you go back and watch my Jason Guthrie scout video, I talk a little bit about it. Long story short is, this is a new steel that just came out from Damasteel. That's a Swedish company that uh, it uses a core steel, which you can see is etched here very darkly. It is a steel with nitrogen in the composition. It is chemically very similar to Vanax steel. Vanax being a popular steel on the Shirogorov knives, not many people use it, but it is a nitrogen infused steel that theoretically has a very high corrosion resistance. This formulation, like Vanax, also stems from Bowler Udenholm's composition of M390 and LMAX steel, so that it is a very fine grain structure and produces a very high hardness. And so it's a very scientifically interesting steel to me. The problem that maybe arises with a new steel like this is that maybe it's not the easiest thing to etch. I think Andre had to do this twice at least to get it right. And uh, perhaps it's still not the most photogenic or beautiful steel in the entire world. Perhaps a standard XHP core might be more photogenic, but to a person like me who's a geek about these kinds of things, I really enjoy the steel enough to not even think twice about what that different etch looks like because to me it is a science experiment in a blade and I enjoy that very much. But what Andre has done is taken the Damasteel cladding to a high mirror polish. You can see how it reflects everything in the environment here. And then he's done the etch so that the core steel comes out very gray. That is the way that uh, Damacore etches. Even the Guthrie etch right here had the core being a bit of a gray thing. It's not ever going to be able, I, I don't know if there's an acid combination that you could do to have a shiny core. Maybe someone will figure that out eventually. But I personally love the dark core. I knew it would look well with the dark colors of the uh, zirconium and of the carbon fiber. And I'm really glad he was able to get this very dark etch. He was also able to make it unbelievably sharp. This is a hollow ground blade comes down to an area so fine behind the edge, it's simply spectacular. This is a man who knows how to make a knife that cuts. It's not just a showpiece. The standard L36M is really meant as a workhorse kind of a knife, an everyday, truly everyday carry type of a knife. Uh, and it shows through, even in this fancy build, he has done a fantastic job of sharpening the knife all the way back to a perfect sharpening choil. Perfect grinds, a beautiful clip point shape with a very unique top swedge, very characteristic silhouette to this knife. Uh, there is really no mistaking the L36M silhouette. Uh, a few people, I think Tyler included, uses it uh, for some of his uh, promotional stuff. Absolutely spectacular uh, blade uh, overall shape to that blade and the handle. Let's take a look here at the way that the steels are layered. So Damacor is uh, three different steels. The cladding is gonna be PMC 27 as the darker steel, RWL 34 is the shiny steel, and then N11X as the nitrogen infused core steel. Let's take a look at the mirrored flats right here. You can see he laser etched his logo on there. I hope it's coming through. Perhaps you can see that even though it's mirror polished, you can still see some of the pattern in the flats right there, very, very cool. I also adore the fact that he was able to get the core nicely centered on this blade. Uh, these cord steels are sort of a double-edged sword, so to speak, because if you, if someone is to make this and it's off center, perhaps it's not as desirable, but I will tell you he absolutely nailed it. Yet another testament to his excellence as a knife maker. So let's go ahead and move back to the pivot. As is noted on the blade, this thing is running on ceramic IKBS. IKBS being the Icoma Korth bearing system. It is free bearings that are in a track that is milled into the titanium frame, and they run against the, the frame and the blade tang. 
Uh, Andre has a few different setups for some of his blades. He'll also do a dual row IKBS. He also does these sort of pivot roller bearing things if you want them. I just went with a standard ceramic IKBS just to uh, limit complexity because I like to service my knives. Uh, and I have actually taken this knife apart uh, a little bit. I didn't want to do too much, but I have removed the bolsters to see what the pivot looks like. It is adjustable easily inside. Uh, as you can see, the bolsters, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about these guys because they're covering the pivot, are this beautiful Zircume material copper, bronze, and zirconium. Sorry, it's so polished that it's reflecting the uh, phone that's recording this right now. Uh, in case you didn't know, I record all my videos on my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. Uh, I've always recorded all my videos on my cell phone. Low tech, low tech on this channel. Gotta save money for knives. Anyways, that bolster is absolutely beautiful. This is a setup that I'm not really very familiar with in terms of other knife makers. So often knife makers spend so much effort in beautifying their pivot. This is a totally different school of thought where all you do is cover the pivot. This is, there's no sign that there's even a pivot there. And it's a beautiful thing because it makes the knife almost seem like it's magical. It gives it a very different feel to it that the blade really just floats. And on that IKBS, oh my gosh, guys, listen to this. The sound will never come through on this tiny speaker. But there is absolutely something to be said about Andre Thorburn's acoustics. This is something that Tyler at Tavarish Works was trying to explain to me from the very beginning, that he fell in love with the sound of the knives and that the acoustics were everything to him. And, you know, I kind of joked about it. I said, oh, man, I mean, I, I get it that they're smooth and that they open. But when you get one of these in your hand and you feel what that feels like, and you hear what that hears like, <laughs> what that sounds like, sorry, uh, it is incredible. And it sends shivers up my spine sometimes. I don't often get excited about the actions or the sounds of knives. I think a lot of them sound the same. But this is a finely tuned instrument. This is like an acoustic guitar with the way that it reverberates when you open the knife. If you haven't experienced the Thorburn thwack, this is an actual thing that I recommend that you feel at some point in your knife life. Uh, I really enjoy it, it, and it's unbelievable. And when this thing closes, it's just the most smoothly controlled closure maybe I've ever experienced. It's just incredible from beginning to end. And this is the way it's going to be, and it's only going to get more smooth. This is the action out of the box. This is a, a day-old knife. Unbelievably smooth, fresh out of the box. And, uh, you know, the IKBS has been absolutely perfected here. Uh, let's go ahead and move back now to the handles. Uh, I told you that I was a big fan of the copper shred carbon fiber. And so I got back in touch with my friend Ryan over at a company called Composite Craft. You can find them online. Uh, they make carbon fiber and other products, including C-Tech. Uh, but I got in touch with him and I said, hey, my friend, I am getting a knife built by Andre Thorburn. He is a master of knife making and I want to get your finest carbon fiber material. And he said, hey, man, I just so happen to have gotten a few sheets of 24 karat gold leaf into the shop and I wanted to make some gold leaf shred carbon fiber. And so this was it. I did not actually even get to touch this stuff before I sent it to Andre. Andre was in the country for Blade Show West, and so uh, I was able to ship it through our mutual friends over at Blade Gallery. I want to say thank you very much to those kind folks for delivering that material to Andre, who was then able to ship it back over to South Africa with his person when he went back over there. He has formed it into these absolutely incredible scales. The gold leaf shimmers in there, unlike the copper. It's on a totally different level than the copper. And it's very difficult to capture in pictures. In the pictures, it just looks sort of yellow. But as you can see on video here, it absolutely captures the light. The chatoyance of this material is unbelievable. It is unrivaled in my collection, and it is definitely one of my absolute favorite carbon fiber materials I've ever seen. I've definitely got some haters out there who don't think that this sort of dusted or colored carbon fiber is anything nice at all, but I go bonkers for it and I think that this is absolutely beautiful. 
Uh, then he went and he made the liners gold. Uh, the clip was made to match the blade. I like that he kept the clip as a user clip. Now I can actually carry this thing, uh, and I'm going to, and I already have, and it's absolutely amazing. Now, there's been one part of the knife that I haven't really shown you too much, and that's because this is really the icing on the cake. This knife, uh, the material that I sent with him, the block of, uh, zirconium or zircume that I sent with him was only maybe it was like this big I'm not really it wasn't much bigger than about this uh, and so he was able to make the bolsters just like that and I said you know if you have any of the material left over I would love to see a backspacer in the zircume and not only did he make a backspacer he made a full length backspacer in absolutely beautiful Zirkume. And take a look at the file work as you go down the spine right here. I'm going to give you a nice slow pan as we come through here. Unbelievable finish work. And then it continues all the way around the butt and then even loops right around there, right where the blade is. And so just take a look at this angle of the knife. Simply incredible to see the layers of the Zerkume as they travel down the spine of the knife. And then you see the layers in the bolsters from the side. And then you see the perfectly centered core of the Damacore as it runs down the spine of the blade. Now you can appreciate that core from this side. This is just almost pornographic how beautiful and perfect this thing is. And that's just the way that it looks. And then you feel the, the action that it has. You hear the sound that it has. You experience the unbelievable sharpness and perfection of this perfect blade shape. It's got a slight recurve to it, but forget it. I'm not gonna resharpen this. I'm gonna send it to a professional. That's what I do. People who ask me, how do I sharpen my knives? I say I send them to a professional who does it well. And so it's not even an issue that it's a bit of a recurve to me because a recurve is probably a better blade for everyday carry and use, except it's slightly harder to sharpen for some people, but not for me. So it's not even an issue. So I'm super thankful to have all of the very traditional Andre Thorburn features on a knife that features my kind of materials, the crazy kind of build, and I love the story that comes with it. I thoroughly enjoyed meeting Mr. Thorburn at the show. He's an incredibly kind guy, incredibly humble for the success that he has achieved. Uh, he is a hidden gem in the knife world. Uh, you would not believe that how much this cost compared to what you would get from many other makers. Andre has been making knives since the 1990s. Uh, he's been in the game for a very long time and he is a absolute master and he does but he does not charge the prices of some of the most elite american makers that you're familiar with from things like TKI and these shows where these knives fetch tens of thousands of dollars no this is going to be much more affordable especially in the more user trims almost all of his knives are under a thousand dollars at the show most of them hover in the five to $700 range uh, in the user trims, and they feel every bit as good as this knife. This is just a dressed up version of those user knives, and they're all incredible. Uh, Andre really has a very unique style, a very unique action and sound and acoustics, and it just has to be experienced to be understood. I'm truly humbled that I was able to put this knife together in this configuration with these materials from this maker. This is truly a masterpiece to me. This is really what my collection has come to be recently. Highly materials focused, uh, custom matching with these different makers from around the world. And I could not be happier with the results right now. I owe a huge debt of gratitude to Andre for working with me, for being patient with my constant questions and sometimes changes at the last minute. And especially I owe a debt of gratitude to his wonderful wife, Marici. I hope I'm pronouncing that name the right way. Uh, she is the person who does most of the contact with customers and she was nothing but polite and patient with me. And so thank you to both of them 
for making this knife happen. I know both of them are involved in the production of each one of his knives. It's a mo literally a mom and pop organization over there, uh, and they do beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, a lot of Andre's knives actually feature bolsters that have hand stippling patterns done by his wife, and they're very beautiful and very nice. They do anodizing on zirconium bolsters. That's just out of this world. So if you're unfamiliar with Andre Thorburn, I highly recommend you familiarize yourself with his work. He does incredible stuff. He is a master of masters. He is the teacher of teachers, and he knows how to make a damn fine knife, and this is certainly one of them. So thank you guys for watching. Tell me what you think of my new L36M from Andre Thorburn, the South African godfather of knife making. Leave some comments down below. Go ahead and click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. Head over to Instagram and follow me at Dr. Frunky. Follow Andre at Andre Thorburn over there. Uh, and as always, guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying take care.